Welcome to my first business lesson. Today we're going to be learning about privatization and nationalization. This topic's relatively short but quite important. We're going to be discussing privatization and nationalization, as well as the arguments for and against privatization, and the same for nationalization. So first, what is privatization? Privatization is when a business owned and controlled by the government is sold to the private sector. This could be to a single investor or an existing private company. Whatever it is, a public sector business is being sold to the private sector. Nationalization is the opposite. It's when the government takes ownership of a private sector business. This could be, for example, if a private business providing essential services is struggling to operate, or if a private company is exploiting society. Whatever the situation may be, there's a private sector business that's now owned and controlled by the government. We're going to discuss three arguments for and against privatization and nationalization. There are a lot more for each, but you should be good for your exam if you remember each of the three. So the first argument for privatization is that it leads to higher productive efficiency. This is because there's a profit motive for every private business, so the businesses are encouraged by their own goals to increase labor productivity, invest in new technology, etc., in order to make production more efficient. The second argument is that competition between privatized firms leads to lower prices. If there's, let's say, a single large telecommunications company that's privatized, it might be split into different units, so there would be multiple telecommunications companies as a result. These privatized units would be competing against each other, so in order to remain competitive and grow, the firms lower their prices, which is beneficial for the consumers. This also ties in with the first argument, since the businesses become productively efficient, which allows them to be able to lower their prices. Lastly, there are more innovative products available. As I said, there may be competition between separate privatized units, and in order to stay competitive, these businesses would need to have an edge over their competitors. So to get more demand from consumers, the businesses are constantly coming up with new ideas and products. This means there's a lot of choice for consumers with the amount of different products, and there are also constantly newer products being released, especially in the case of technological industries. Now on to arguments against privatization. First, privatized monopolies would exploit consumers. Let's take the telecommunications company from earlier and say that this time, the government sells it as it is, as a single company. This would mean that that company now has private monopoly power. Since there aren't any other telecommunications companies, they'll charge high prices knowing that consumers don't have a choice but to pay that price. Therefore, they're using their monopoly power to exploit consumers. Next, private businesses tend to ignore external costs of production. A common example of this is pollution. Since a private business is mainly concerned about their own benefit, they won't pay much attention to the amount of pollution they're causing, which could be harmful to the environment or people nearby. Lastly, it can be difficult to achieve consistent policies across separate private units. Let's take the example of water supply. If a government-owned water supply company is split into competing private units, it would be difficult to achieve a policy across all the units relating to the water supply. For example, how much water to supply. This is because the competing units would want to have competitive edge so they wouldn't abide to a common policy. This is why essential industries like water supply are said to be better off under government control. Now we're going to move on to arguments for and against nationalization. The first argument for nationalization is that government businesses aim for social welfare and benefit. A nationalized business wouldn't have profit as their main motive. Instead, it would be to benefit society and increase social welfare, which is obviously beneficial for society. Next, nationalization allows loss-making services to be kept open. For example, a railway line in a rural town might be unprofitable, but the people living in that town need access to the railway line so it's kept open. This is linked to the previous argument since loss-making services would be kept open for social benefit. Lastly, there are opportunities for economies of scale in nationalized companies. If we take the water supply example and say that competing private units are nationalized into one large company, there would be opportunity for economies of scale, so there would be lower per unit costs which would be beneficial to society since the cost that they pay would also be lower. 
Last topic for today, we have arguments against nationalization. First, the lack of competition leads to inefficiency. Since there isn't competition in nationalization, as well as the fact that there's no profit motive, there isn't much incentive to operate efficiently or be innovative. Next, there's an opportunity cost to society of operating the firm. If the government puts a lot of funds into a nationalized company, those funds could have been used elsewhere, such as providing more access to health care or education. Last but not least, decision-making in nationalized businesses can be influenced by politics. If there's a business run by a particular political party or a section of the government that is in favor of a particular political party, they would likely make decisions influenced by them in order to gain support, which wouldn't exactly be justified or fair to society. So that was all for today's lesson, and I'll be back very soon with my next one. Thank you.